Welcome to your seawater lab prep video. And in class today, you guys are going to be looking at a couple different types of seawater concentrations, and you're going to use two different methods to determine the salinity of each of these samples, as well as a computer. So you're going to be using these mystery samples and telling me what you think their salinity levels are. So in the first method, you're going to do kind of the old school way, and you're going to take uh, one sample and boil it down. So you or your group is going to be in charge in one of the assigned letters that I've given you. You're not going to do all four of them, you're only going to do one. The reason for this is because it can be a little time consuming. So for the first portion of this lab, you're going to be boiling a sample down to figure out the salinity of that sample. So you're going to have four different mystery samples in lab, and I'm going to assign you one of those four samples. In this case, I chose D to be my sample, and you're going to measure out about 20 milliliters of that sample in your beaker, and make sure it's labeled with what sample letter you have. You'll take your Petri dish, which is what you're going to use to boil your sample down, and you're going to put it on the scale. It's very important to make sure that your scale is zeroed, so if it doesn't say zero, hit that zero button and it'll go right to zero. So you'll put your petri dish right on top, let it come to an equilibrium, make sure you write that weight down just in case your scale gets turned off. So write that number down and then what you can do is to hit the zero button again and now this machine has recorded the weight of that petri dish. So now all it's going to weigh is the water that we are going to pour into it. Okay? So once this comes to equilibrium again, then you'll write this number down. That's going to be the weight of your water and the salt that's in that water. So make sure you record that number as well. So once you get those numbers all set, take your petri dish and we're going to put it over onto the heating plate or the hot plate over here. It might help also if you want to label your petri dish as well with what sample number you have or letter. And then we're going to turn your heat up. Depending on what type of hot plate you have, um, I would try to aim for about halfway or 300 degrees Celsius. And then you're going to let it sit. Now it's important not to walk away from this because you could end up with a real nasty mess on your hands. So make sure that someone is keeping an eye on your petri dish as it slowly starts to boil. If you notice that things are kind of popping out of your petri dish, make sure you turn your temperature down. If you notice that things are getting um, less and less water, but and then more and more salt, you have very little water in there, you can take that petri di dish off, make sure you use some tongs so you don't burn your fingers, and then let it cool. And if all of the water is gone, then you can take your petri dish and then reweigh it on your scale if it's just pure salt. If there's any water like you see here, you don't want to weigh it yet. You want to make sure it's just salt. So once it's just salt, you'll weigh it. And hopefully it still been, has that weight of the petri dish in there. And you'll, then you'll record the weight of just the salt. And then you'll do the math to figure out the salinity of that sample. So once everyone in the group, in your group, has done this, seen what happens, you're going to write your salinity for your sample letter up on the chalkboard. And that way everybody in the class will get a chance to see what the calculated salinities are for each of these using this boiling method. So the second method that you're going to use to measure the salinity of these mystery samples is to use what's called a refractometer. So before you, we get into the details of using this instrument, make sure that when you're collecting each of these samples, that first you stir the sample to make sure that any salts that are on the bottom of the dish or at the bottom of the beaker are all mixed in. And then make sure that each of your beakers that you're going to collect your sample in has the appropriate letter on it and then you're filling it with the appropriate sample. You don't want anything to be mixed up because that would be bad for your numbers. And then make sure you have four of these little plastic eyedroppers because you don't want to contaminate through each of your samples. 
So once you have everything, you'll take your refractometer, and first what you need to do is make sure it's appropriately calibrated. So you'll have this bottle of distilled water, and then with your refractometer comes a little eyedropper. You're going to use this eyedropper to put in your distilled water only. Do not use any of these because these are going to be contaminated with your salt solutions. So what you'll do is you'll take a drop of your distilled water, and this is the same method you're going to use when you actually end up measuring each of your different salinities. And then you have your refractometer here. And this has a couple different parts. We've got this plastic piece that comes up and off. You have this blue portion of the instrument. And this is where you're actually going to be putting your drops of your distilled water. Let's put a couple drops in here. And then you're going to close this plastic top on here over. And you want to try to make sure that there's no air bubbles in there at all. So then what you're going to do is take it and put it to your eye. And if you don't notice that you have zero salinity, what you're going to do is use this little dial here. There's a little mini screwdriver that you have in your refractometer case. And you're going to just turn this one way or another to make sure that you have, with your distilled water, that you have zero parts per thousand. So once you've done that, we're going to clean it off that water off of there. And because we've just used distilled water, we don't have to worry about cleaning it too much. Just make sure it's nice and dry. And then you'll take each of your samples. So we can start with A. Take a little bit of that sample. Take some of that sample and then put a couple drops on that blue part again. Close the top, make sure that there's no air bubbles, and then you're going to point this towards a light source. It could be a window, it could be a light, and then you're going to look through your eyepiece at the end to figure out what your salinity is. So once you've figured out your salinity, make sure that you rinse this off. So you're going to open up your screen here. I've got a little beaker to rinse it into. I've got my distilled water in this eyedropper still. I'm going to rinse it off here, maybe get a little bit more distilled water. Nice and clean. Make sure you don't forget to rinse off this plastic part as well. Rinse it all off, dry it off, and then you're ready for your next sample. So once you've done this for all four of your samples, make sure you share your data with the rest of the class. So write it up on the board. And then once everyone's recorded everything up on the board, then you're going to average that data from everybody. And you'll see maybe they're pretty similar. The refractometer is pretty accurate, so you might not have a lot of variation, but sometimes you do. So once you've recorded all that information on your charts, you're going to answer the questions, compare the two different methods to one another. Now, because of a shortness of supplies, you might need to rotate through each experiment, take turns with the refractometer. So um, while you're waiting for the different um, pieces of, of uh, uh, lab equipment, you can answer the questions um, and do some of the online portions uh, while you're waiting. So please email me if you have any questions.